and that's where I will show you another kind of validation control. If we go to comments, let's uh, insert a table layout again. Here we'll have space for our comments and also a rating. So now the comments, we need a text box. And this time we'll turn on the multi-line option. And let me make a little more space for it. And for the rating area, I'll also use a text box. And for the comments, I need to give it a better control name. Okay, for these two, we're going to use different validations. Under the comments, we'll use the custom validator. Now I'm going to do something kind of funny here. I'm going to say that comments are limited to no more than 10 characters, which is kind of silly, but it's going to make it easier to test. So in order to hook this up, because that's not built in here as a validation control, I need to, again, I need to still map it to the control to validate comments, but I can handle a server-side event called server validate. So if I double click on that, that this code will be executed when the, um, when the page posts back and this is where we'll put in our code to check and see if it's good. So I can do if text comments, if the text itself, if the length is greater than 10 characters, then I'll say that it's not valid. And I do that by using this argument right here. So I can type args.isValid equals false. Otherwise, it's okay. We still have to do everything else like we did with the other controls. We have to set the text property and everything else um, right here, the error message. I'll put no more than and set the text equal to star. And this also means I'll need that summary validation control. I'll do the same thing by merging these two cells and drop it in here. And let's see this one work. Now, if I, by leaving this page on the comments right here, watch when I bring it up, it's going to go directly to that step. So it doesn't start a contact info. That's important to remember before you finish, make sure you reset your page back to contact info. But if I try to uh, go forward with too many characters, we see that web page flash. We actually made a round trip to the server. and You can see that it says no more than 10 characters. If I just put in a couple, it works fine. But let me try something else. Watch. If I put in a lot of characters and go forward, I'm getting a server round trip. Now, if you want to prevent a round trip to the um, server, you can also inject a little bit of JavaScript client-side code. See right here it says client validation function. If I type in um, validate comments. This just gives it a, uh, it's going to look for a piece of JavaScript on the client and we can write that here in source mode. Now we don't get a lot of assistance here in writing this but that's alright, I think I can handle it. We need a, a regular JavaScript script block. So I'll choose the language and, as JavaScript and I need a simple function called validate comments and it takes two parameters. I, I just happen to know because by looking up the help file, we need two. One called sender and another args. And let me get some space here. And like this, like the server side function that we did, we can say if args, it has a value, and if the length is greater than 10, then I'll set args is valid equal to false. Otherwise, just like the server code, set it to true, and that should do it. So let's test our client code. So now when I'm in here and I have too many characters and tab away, I get the asterisk right away. When it's less than 10, it goes away. Cool. So the last validation control I want to put on here is the range validation. So we'll, for this rating, this one's pretty easy, we'll just drop in the range validator and associate it with that control, the rating. And I'll say use, um, ah, this will be easy, uh, use a number between 1 and 5. A 
I'll set a maximum value of 5 and a minimum of 1 and bring that up in a browser. Try it with a uh, 589. And there we go, it's not accepting it. We can go forward with a 2. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got our different field validations. We have our different controls. Let's say for the summary page, we normally here's where you'd put, um, we would show an example of the email we're about to send. But I'm just going to leave it alone. There's, you can refer back to any of the controls on the page from this step pretty easily. Instead, what I want to do is handle the finish button. And for that, right here where it says finish button click, if I double click that, that will create a handler for us. And this code will be called when the user wants to uh, move on and execute the final step. So I have some um, code I'm going to copy here from the clipboard. And this is a helper method I wrote to send the mail. Now it's complaining right here. The reason why I want to show you this is because we uh, the the SMTP components are all handled now in a new namespace. The namespace was moved to system.net.mail. So here I already have our Exchange server set up, and everything should work fine. So in the finish button click, what I'll do is just simply call send mail and make it from the uh, from the email text and we'll send the comments. Now I don't have any kind of error, error checking here or anything but I think that's fine for this sample. So let's close all these pages and go try it out. Ah, remember I have to reset the form back to the contact info so I get the whole thing. Oops. <laughs> Simple. How's that? Okay, now when I hit finish, it sends the piece of email. Now this would be the page where we would show something like it's complete. And when I go to my email, there we go. We have the email fooabar.com and there's our simple. So it's pretty easy to send a piece of email and it's pretty easy to set up your, your wizard page. It would be nice if I had something a little bit nicer looking there, but I think you get the idea. So you can see that with a little bit of custom code and some validation controls, you can build a pretty functioning wizard component of your own.